Okay guys, so today I've got a deck profile for you and it's based around the air element. So it's just pure mono air. We're not mixing colors. And uh, we're basing the deck around Ayatin. So his effect is once per turn, you can sacrifice a unit that you control and then put into play one air unit from your hand whose cost is one greater than the sacrifice unit. So you gotta tap, tap a shard to activate this as the cost and then sacrifice a unit and then you bring out one unit that's one cost higher than the unit that you sacrifice. So you can sacrifice uh, any unit. So if you sacrifice a colorless unit, you know, of a cost three, you can then bring out a cost four air unit from your hand. You cannot sacrifice an air unit and bring out a colorless from your hand. So you can only bring out air units from your hand, but you can sacrifice any uh, color element for Ayatin's uh, cost. And of course, Kite is our spirit, which is going to kind of play into uh, our deck's main focus. So let's just get into it. This is our champion and our spirit. So we're going to go through all of the units first. So first up are our one drops. So we're playing three Skyship Engineer. This card is really good. Um, for one cost, you can break towers on your second turn. Also, its ability to exhaust it, to return it to your hand, um, is, is something that plays into this deck's uh, main strategy, which is bouncing cards back and forth to gain effects. So this card's really good. You don't really uh, use the effect you know, to have your airships cost one or less. It's essentially just to return it to your hand to activate other cards that require that ability. So that's our first one drop. Our next one drop is Sky Recruit. So we play three of these as well. Basically, uh, whenever you play Sky Recruit, you grab another one from your deck. So this deck has some cost associated with it, uh, primarily with Kite, you know, pitching a card to return a card from your field to your hand. So this kind of plays into that. Uh, I'd say that's the main focus of this and also to be uh, fodder for uh, Ayatin. So, good good one drop. And then our last one drop is Argent Egg. So Argent Egg is really good in this deck um, because uh, green doesn't have a whole lot of guardians. So to have a one drop guardian and then to have uh, a token come out after you use its uh, guardian effect to then be used for Ayatin uh, if you want is, is nice. So uh, it, it's got multi-purpose in this deck so it's a good card to run as a three of so now for our two drops we run three sand sea traveler this card is really good um, it's 1500 for a two drop so it's it can destroy any tower and its effect is whenever you attack with it it switches one of your shards to active so a lot of times you can exhaust all of your shards and attack with this guy and then make your ayatin live uh, on your opponent's turn so this card's very good and the only other two drop we play is Sky Tree Hawk. So whenever he's returned from your hand uh, from the field, you can discard it and draw two cards. So this is what keeps your card advantage up. Uh, good card. Um, yeah, not much to say about it other than, you know, it, it helps card advantage. So for our first three drop, we run uh, three Sky Tree Marks, uh, two Sky Tree Marksmen. So whenever he comes into play, you return another area unit. To your hand and if you do you deal 1500 to a target unit so this card obviously goes uh very well with sky tree hawk um so to pretty much return sky tree hawk and then deal 1500 to a, a unit that your opponent controls and then drawing two cards is, is really nice i really underestimated this card when i first saw it but the more and more i play it the more and more i like it i actually might bump it up to three it's very good in my opinion and our other three drop is uh, Great Hawk of Cloud Sea. This is the guardian for this uh, element. So, yeah, obviously a good effect. But the problem is it only works whenever you have uh, a wind tower on the field that's destroyed, whether it's yours or your opponent's. But um, that's why I only run one. I might run two. Uh, I don't know. But right now, one seems to be okay. So now for our four drops, uh, Ayatin, the Righteous Outlaw. This card's so good. It helps dodge a lot of uh, abilities 
uh, or spells that your opponent is trying to uh, to have on on your cards, and it lets you get around them. And then also, if you're if you return two air units uh, from your field to your hand, this comes out for free. So there are times where you can actually get this card out, like on turn uh, two. So to have a four drop out on your opponent's turn two really makes this deck aggressive. So this card is really good. Uh, we also run one Sylphia. Uh, this card is probably the get best card in the game right now, so uh, you run it. <laughs> uh, yeah, you just keep looping this. You know, the fact that it's a four drop is is nuts, so you can, you know, you can bring it out with Iotin on your opponent's turn by sacrificing one of your three uh, cost units to disrupt plays. Um, obviously a, a must add. Uh, next is Silver Watchwoman. I just run one of these just because it's a good game ender, you know, uh, to come in and gain quickness. It can steal some games. I like this card. And our last four drop is Transfiguration Master. So whenever this guy comes into play, you can expel a card. And then you got to roll a die. And depending on your die roll, your opponent gets a really strong token or a really weak token. The reason I like this card is one... Uh, it's one of the only cards right now that outs Sylphia um, to, you know, to banish your opponent's Sylphia is really good, really strong. Um, also, this uh, deck really doesn't have a whole lot of issues uh, getting rid of tokens and low-cost units. So uh, even if you do roll your die to get a hulking mech unit token on your opponent's field, you should be able to get rid of it easily. So this card is very good in my opinion. So now, for our five drops, we just run uh, three Garga. So Garga is extremely good. Uh, being able to, again, disrupt your opponent on his turn uh, with Ayatin uh, to bring out Garga and bounce is, is nice. And then also on your turn to bounce two of their uh, units or even one of yours if you wanted to, to gain quickness and then, uh, you know, going for for game or or to break a tower is is very nice this card is really good and i think you run three of it in this style of build so our sixth drop is twilight knight just a really good uh generic card you know being able to again just kind of steal games by by destroying a guardian gaining quickness and then taking out two towers as soon as he's dropped is is very good also i did want to run a six so i had uh card that I could pop to bring out Conist, which is, uh, you know, another good card to bring out your opponent's turn because whenever it's in front of a card, that card can't attack and it loses 2,000. Also, it bounces your air units back so it can bounce back like a Sylphia or a Garga so you can use it that next turn. Um, and when you do that, it's unaffected by spells. So this card's obviously very good. Um, so yeah, I wanted to include it. So now our spells, uh, we're going to start with one Tornado Shot. So this card is is not bad. It's a one cost uh, that deals 2,000 to a target, but you do have to return a card. So obviously when you have your other combo pieces, this card's good. But uh, I didn't want it to be dead, so I didn't want to play a whole lot. So I think one of them is, is good. So next we have Hurricane Shot. So I really like this card. Um... You know, it, it plays into the deck strategy with bouncing cards back while also destroying anything with a four cost or less. So uh, I really like this card. I think it's probably the best spell in here. It does have some competition, uh, but it's definitely one of the cards that I've liked the most in here. We also play uh, three Omega Magic Ks. Uh, this card's so good. The fact that it can cost zero uh, in the later stages of the game, to have your opponent not be able to deal damage or even attack is really good. So you can use it defensively or offensively. Um, you know, if your opponent's trying to trade units with yours, and then you can play this to have it not deal damage to your uh, to your unit is is very beneficial. Very good card. We do play two Monarch Sky Dagger and. I'm going to be honest, you don't really use this as an augment. You kind of just use it as fodder. Um, you know, pitching with Kite's effect 
uh, is, is one of the key things to do. Um, because whenever a unit is returned to your hand, you just add this back to your hand. So you have, you know, you maintain your, your hand, uh, your hand size to make your plays. So that's why this card is good. Uh, we do play one lightning shot. This is really good if you draw it on your third turn or fourth turn, because at that point in time, your opponent is most likely going to have one strong unit and, and one weak unit. So the fact that you can clear two with three is with a three cost card is really good. Uh, not good enough to play more than one, but it is a nice one of. And then our last card is Statue of the Argent Tower. So uh, just a solid generic augment. You know, you draw one card and then you can sacrifice and shuffle up uh, to three units from your discard zone into your deck. So, you know, if your opponent does clear your Sylvia or, you know, maybe you want to put a Garga back or maybe your Sky Recruits uh, to go through their effects again and get more hand advantage, uh, I found this to be a very useful augment. So yeah, that was the deck, guys. Uh, I hope you liked it. If you have any questions uh, about any of the combos or any of my card choices, just let me know down below in the comments section. And, uh, you know, stay tuned for other deck profiles that I might be doing. I'm thinking of doing uh, maybe dark blue. I'm also thinking mono blue or mono light. So uh, look forward to those. Thanks.